Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure coming to you from Waikiki Beach, high above the uh, the altar of St. Augustine by the Sea uh, Catholic Church. Our, our REAs, our condo is on the 25th floor, just above where the altar is. We're looking out at the beautiful Pacific Ocean today. Uh, today, the, the surf, we had big swell a few days ago. Today, the surf is just, it's, it's well, Pacific means peaceful. Just a peaceful uh, rolling little waves out there today. Uh, but after we're done with this, my wife and I are going to go out and we're going to start training for the Duke Ocean Fest. We've got a brand new tandem surfboard coming in today. I don't know if you know, that's where Cindy and I we paddle out and uh, I put her in different lifts and uh, we're going to get to hang out with our friends coming from all over the world to to compete. So um, we're stoked. We were right back with the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Our guest is going to be Dr. Stephen Baskerville. We'll be right back. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I want to remind everybody that my newest book, 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone, has been hitting the charts, and it's been, it's been in the top 10 in its category and continues to do so. It's been out now for over nine months. And so, men, I really think, I know you may not like to read books, but this book's going to read you. We've had many men say that they picked up a book with a life on it for them. Uh, they read it all the way through in one weekend and then started over. And so it's 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 basically a uh, a trail guide for men to to get traction in their lives and to affirm those instincts that you have of what it means to be, be a real man. And uh, because we need cowboys again, we need real men. That is why I'm so excited to have Stephen Baskerville Hill. I mean, every single one of his sentences is uh, is like a machine gun bullet. It, it, every single sentence he has in this book, "Who Lost America." why the United States went communist and what to do about it. And I, I know there's a lot of reasons in here that Stephen writes about, but I think the focus for me of this book, it's, it's where have all the problems gone. It's, it's the, it's the uh, emasculated uh, America, what's happened to the men in America. And I think if we can fix that, then we can fix everything. So I'm mean, like Stephen Baskerville is a notable scholar and author currently serving in the head of the Department of Political Studies. I get this. Collegium Intermarium in Warsaw, Poland, is also a research fellow at the Independent Institute and the Howard Center for Family, Religion, and Society. And he's, he studied at the London School of, uh, sorry, I'm going to turn the page, and also, I believe, uh, studied in, uh, in uh, Moscow, Moscow, Russia. So, so what time is it there, Stephen Baskerville, where you are in, in, here in Poland right now, correct? It's nine o'clock. I'm actually in Romania. You're in Romania. Oh, wow. So you're nine o'clock in the evening, and it's about eight o'clock in the morning while we're recording this in, in Hawaii. So, well, thank you. I, I'm really glad that we're able to make the connection. Can we just, uh, can you tell us just a little bit? You have a fascinating life. Uh, can you tell us just a little bit about, uh, like we say in Hawaii, that story, the tradition of talk story. Try to tell us a little bit about your life, but don't 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 tell us any lies. In Hawaii, when we talk story, we tell lies. But give us the real the real the real scoop. How how you became the Dr. Stephen Baskerville li living in Romania? Well, I kept getting thrown out of universities in the United States, so that um, it became much more uh, uh, secure to have, to take jobs in Europe. Um, among other reasons, I um, I try to I, like like you said, I'm a scholar of, of politics, political science, if you prefer. <clears throat> but I try to apply it to certain things that many people don't apply it to. I apply it to things like um, families and family relations and relations between men and women, and uh, things like religion is a big interest of mine. So I try to look at things. I wrote a book on the divorce industry. But uh, I think it was oddly enough the the first book really that looked at the, at the politics uh, and analyzed the politics of the divorce industry. So much of it was written by the uh, you know psychologists and psychiatrists and lawyers and legal practitioners, 
but nobody really nobody really looked at it systematically before. So that's what I tried to do, and and the result is some kind of offbeat, some kind of uh, uh, unconventional um, approaches to some of these things. So that's well, what counter, I counterintuitive. Counterintuitive. Counter yeah. uh, right. if, if you're going with the male swim of the of the of the wolf, as we call it now, the wolf culture, the, the beginnings of which I mean, you can go back, of course, as far back as the French Revolution, but. Uh, but if you look at all of that, what, what has happened in the last 50 years with the rise of the feminine, I'm not going to call it feminism. I would say it's the rise of femininity of our culture. Uh, uh, we've lost, we've lost true manliness. And I think, uh, mm -hmm. and I think we men have acquiesced and we even like to say, Oh, woe is me. They always talk bad about men on commercials and, and, uh, you know, they, they push us out of our, out of our, uh, our, um, they mar marginalized us. And I, it just sounds like victims to me. It, you know, the, the key the key is to just where you are right now, start being a man. So before I get on my soapbox, uh, I just got your book in. I went right to the chapter on emasculated, em emasculated America. And I just want to hear Stephen Baskerville tell us, tell us, tell us what that means. I mean, it, it you really go deep, you, 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 you know, uh, so we'd li I'd like for you to just, just what has happened and what do we need to do about it? Well, right. It's good that you mentioned it that way, because that's that's a, something where I, I was very concerned about, was that so many people today talk about, you know, the woe is me, um, the decline of, for example, the decline of masculinity or the decline of the family or the decline of Judeo-Christian values or of religious faith or the decline of civic virtue. And when you put it that way, uh, without explaining it, it does sound like, you know, woe is me. It sounds like Aunt Sally or Cassandra's lamenting the good old days and wagging their fingers at, at, at naughty boys and girls. But what I try to do is I try to look at it uh, at, the, at the precise lines of cause and effect. Why? I, I think all those things are correct, by the way. It is the decline of religious faith, Judeo-Christian values, the family uh, and masculinity. But you have to show people precisely why. What is it that uh, is declining? What is what is how has this happened? Because if you don't, you're going to make mistakes. And um, to try to understand all of this so-called gender or sex relations, the sexual revolution, the attack on men, uh, it's very difficult to understand. And if you if you get it wrong, you can end up uh, helping your enemies. And so what I try to do is. Put it together very uh, clearly. Uh, though, for example, I look at the welfare state. In many ways, that's what began it all. Um, I'm increasingly convinced that the welfare state was the beginning of the government takeover of the family. And it started with the poor. And it started with the social workers. And many of them were radical feminists. It started out as, as anarchists or Marxists in the early 20th century, and they became radical feminists. And they took over the low-income families, and they threw the black men, especially and minority men, out of their homes, and they politicized the, uh, you know, the the, the single mothers in the low-income communities. And uh, that's why uh, one thing I argue is that uh, black uh, men, at least, have a legitimate gripe. Uh, we talk a lot about race oh, these days, yes, but black absolutely. men, you know, all the social programs, all the welfare programs that everybody touts so so loudly, those don't help black men. You know what those all. were? Those were insults towards black men. Exactly. You know, you can, oh, you you poor poor black man, you can't. You know, I love Professor Thomas Sawa. I'm sure you do too. I just yeah. love that man. Uh, you know, when you when you treat men like they're helpless and they're a victim. You take away the very essence of a man is to be self reliant. I mean, not not yeah. that we don't need other brothers, and but a man, if anything, if there's anything a man is, is he's gonna make he's gonna rise to the occasion, come hell or high water, he's gonna put bread on the table for that family, and he's gonna make that happen. And we saw the rise, we saw beautiful progress within the black community until the nanny state came in, came in and said, "Oh, poor you, you can't do it." I'm sorry. Now I'm talking. You're. Ta I'm. I'm interrupting what you were saying. But that that was that was trying to enslave the black community again. The when the nanny state, the welfare state, came in is the biggest insult to uh, our our black brothers. Absolutely. And uh, you know the the black family survived slavery. It survived segregation, but it has not survived the welfare state. And I. Um, I criticize conservatives in this because, uh, you know, they say that the uh, you know the black 
but black Americans have a victim mentality and they're always going on about racism and American society is not racist. And that's true. The, the conservatives are right about that. But they haven't substitute they haven't put anything into place of it. You know, if, if it's not racism that's destroying the black community, then what is it? Okay, uh, but, 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 but let me go there. But but then you in your book you make the point that that has swayed uh all the way into, you know, the woe is me of the white man too. In other words, that 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 virus, that mind virus has infected all men now. Like yes. for me. So we're talking about yes. I'm, I just interrupt you because we got a break. Um, but we how do we what is the mind virus? How do we get to the root of it? And how do we get men to to act like men again? We're talking with with what an honor, dude. I get to talk with Dr. Stephen Baskerville because I have a radio show. Otherwise, I'd probably never get to know you. So we're so stoked to have you on our show. We'll be right back to talk more about his newest book, uh, Who Lost America? Stephen Baskerville, Why the United States Went Communist and What to Do About It. Professor, uh, I guess living in Romania now, I don't know. I thought you were in Warsaw, Poland. Where, where, but uh, are you teaching there now or are you m mainly writing? What are you doing in Romania before we take this break? Well, I live in Romania, but I work in, in Poland. But you work uh, oh, in, in wow. France. So it's a, wow. it's a little wow. complicated, but uh, yeah. but it's interesting. It's fun. It's, it's your adventure. It's, it's, it's the adventure. Okay, we'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. Schoolofmanliness.com is a place for men of grit and grace to join together to inspire, to encourage, and to challenge each other to grow in manly virtue. Members receive morning man meditations, a monthly curriculum that is rich with audio, video, and written content, and a trail guide to help you map out your new trajectory. Many of our members lead their sons through this same curriculum. Your membership gives you access to both the Man Cave, which is our non-Facebook type community, and the School of Manliness at schoolofmanliness.com. Become a member at schoolofmanliness.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to NotreDameFCU.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. My newest book, 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone, has hit the top five in Christian books for a good reason. It's because men are searching for traction and a trail guide to live out the unique calling and the gifts that they were born with, that each man individually is factory loaded with by God. Paul said, be watchful, stand firm in the faith, act like men, do all things in love. Finally, here is a book that talks with men the way men talk with each other. Just plain old straight shoot. By the way, Mama Bears, this is your chance to get this message to your men. Go to schoolofmanliness.com or anywhere books are sold. 12 Rules for Manliness. Where have all the cowboys gone? This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Usually as I come back from a, from a, a break, I talk about different things like our our schoolofmanliness.com or or our, our the the Bear Wozniak Adventure YouTube channel, but I just feel like really be focused on talking about my book 12 Rules for Manliness, where have all the cowboys gone? I think it's essential uh for men to to uh, the thing about this book is it's like two guys sitting on the back porch the way men talk to men. I mean, women love this book too, but it's it's kind of like that shot of whiskey and a cigar type conversation that men have with each other. 
It's gritty. It's real. A uh, young men, you'll hear the voice of a, maybe a, a your uncle's talking in it. Uh, older men, you're gonna you're gonna find a, a real conversation uh, with people that maybe you miss, people that you don't see much of anymore. So find the book Twelve Rules for Manliness. Where have all the cowboys gone? And then if you want to really get to the meat of it, the chewy part, you can come to this book, Who Lost America? Why the United States Went Communist and What to Do About It. Dr. Stephen Baskerville, we're talking about his cha chapter in the book, uh, Emasculated America. So you were talking about what happened as the, as the, the feminine, the fem feminine culture you know, this isn't a put down. This is the way women, I think women are made is they want security. I, I was watching a, a TV show called IT Crowd. It's a British TV show. And this one woman is attracted to this one guy and her friend asks her, well, why, why do you like this guy? He was a, he was a um, security guard. He said, because right on his chest, it says the word security, you know. And and that's where the world, you know, you talk about in the book how the need for security and the safety net has has overwhelmed uh, the, the the feminization of our culture, of our government, of our especially our education system, the DEI of the of the um, of the uh, of corporations, the DEI of what happened with with Donald Trump when you have four well-meaning, maybe very good women who just weren't frankly tall enough to protect the president. Um, what I'm saying is there's been a feminization of our culture, uh, and that's all about safety. And 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 men, by our very nature, we want a challenge. We want people to rely on us. We want to be brave. We want to be courageous. We want to have fortitude. We don't need to be sheltered little puppies. Will you please rescue me from my rant, Steve? Tell us about yeah. that masculinity. Yes, very much so. And it's, uh, you know, you, you look at many of the... Uh, the, the governmental instruments, the government machinery that is used to destroy men um, and uh, the, the tools and the weapons that have been uh, uh, politicized in recent years. Many of them started in the welfare state, but then they spread out to, as you say, the middle class, the white middle class, especially. Uh, and they did this largely through, through the no-fault divorce machinery. Uh, and if you look at that, that I'm thinking of things like the accusations of child abuse and accusations of domestic violence and claims of non-payment of child support. These had the devastating effect. They turned men into criminals and they turned social workers into police, plainclothes police. Mm -hmm. And uh, those weapons were so effective at destroying black men in the welfare system that they started using them in the divorce courts against white men, middle class men generally. And that was so effective that they started using it in the larger politics. And that's where things like Me Too was born, uh, the Me Too hashtag, you know, and they started launching accusations against celebrities like Bill Cosby and the Prince of York and uh, and um, the uh, Brett uh, Kavanaugh, the Supreme Court nominee. Mm -hmm. And they found that they didn't, if you want to get rid of unwanted men, whether it's in the welfare state or whether it's your child's uh, father or whether it's the latest nominee to the Supreme Court, or some presidential candidate, the way to get rid of unwanted men is to launch these quasi-criminal accusations of gender crimes against them. Guilty until domestic, proven innocent, right? Exactly. D domestic violence, if it's a father, uh, sexual harassment or sexual uh, assault or rape, if it's a, a political figure or a, or a celebrity. Uh, but it's the same sort of thing. I mean, it's, they're all adjudicated the same way, or they're, they're not adjudicated uh, at all. They just... Uh, you know, just process right they're well and, and they're uh, adjudicated within the social structure judge guilty immediately right without yeah. any trial not even absolutely even because though they there's have a the sympathy legal... of the meat right the right. media are sympathetic to this and, and no one uh everyone runs for the for the cover no one wants to defend anybody who's uh who's accused of these things they spread out to the universe by the way two institutions that they spread to very quickly was uh, the military and the universities Oh, and I have chapters on each one of those. It's scary. The way they use uh, these accusations of rape, sexual assault uh, to emasculate uh, the military very fast. It's one of the most feminized institutions in America. It's basically a giant welfare state. Um, and uh, and the universities also. Well, you know, you know I re I, I, maybe I shouldn't get so personal, but I was married to a woman who I very much, very loved, very much loved. After 20 years of marriage, our marriage ended. 
and I remember I was I, I was really challenged on how to discipline my children, you know, because when there's a bifurcation like that, it's very, very difficult. And I had a couple of sons who are one of my sons just wouldn't go to school. You know, I, I would get up, go to work. And uh, the woman that I had the maid co- that would come and say, I hear the water running like your son's taking a shower, but he's been in there for two hours. And I have a son that's sleeping in and not going to school. So my remedy was to take them on a long hike. You know, I used to go hiking with them in the mountains. And I remember once I dropped them off at the bottom of this mountain by the ocean and said, you walk home. You get, you know, if you were an hour late, I'm going to put you on an hour long hike. I had social services scare the heck out of me. I got called in because I, I told my sons, you're going to go, you're going to go on a hike. And it was considered uh, being abusive. You know, it's like the, the father, the fathers that I grew up with around me, they disciplined their children, especially their sons. In fact, a lot of times it was their sons that they, they would discipline as an example to their daughters, you know, that this is our, our expectations. They were tougher on their sons. Uh, and now if a father tries to be dis- disciplined, I, you know what? I'll tell you what, Stephen, I was out on the beach about four years ago. This is what happened. A young boy picked up a, 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 a branch and made it into a sword. He was probably about six or probably about eight years old. And he started sword fighting a bush on the beach. His father took the sword from him and said, son, we don't hurt nature. And I thought, man, if you talk about hurting nature, that you're, you're killing your son's very nature to be a warrior. And th- that's what I see happening. And, and so many men, it's like you cannot any longer really, it's, you've got to really be creative to find a way to bring discipline into your children's life without being well, called. Very much so. And this has yeah. to be remembered because we, you know, we all lament and we excoriate men for uh, not being manly, not being masculine, not having fortitude and courage. But they're up. They're up against not just themselves and their own inhibitions, but they're you know the state. As th- those examples show very vividly, you know the state discourages this uh, when you have uh, when you have the state in the form of of social workers, femi- often feminist social workers, or family court judges who are often feminist or under pressure from feminists. Um, then it's you know it's it's easy to tell men act like a man, but you you can, you act like a man, and you might have your children taken away, or you exactly. might spend a few days in the uh, in the domestic violence unit, or the you know the child abuser, and so uh, it's uh, you know we really have to I mean the we really have to challenge uh, the state machinery uh, on this. It doesn't do any good. I, I see, see a lot of again here we get back to the old. Problem of lamenting and bemoaning, and too many, too many people today lament and bemoan. But you've really got to challenge the state machinery, because this is what is uh, preventing men we, from from acting like men. We have to go back to Aquinas, right? We got to go back to natural law. I mean, praise God for the Catholic Church that re- continues to stand to say only men are to be priests. That's the rule. That's a that's a role, an office yes. for men. Jesus had many women that followed him. He had 12 men that were his apostles, that were his disciples. There is, a, there is a role for men. And you make a point that the society today acts with hysteria. I'd like to call it hysteria, you know, because because that hysterical sort of response is a feminine response. Usually the hysteria comes from someone who feels uh, underpowered, you know, and a man, if anything, should feel powerful. And so when a man acts with hysteria, it's it's very fem- a very, I guess, toxic femininity might be the word. But mm-hmm. there's a hysteria in our society over the littlest, the littlest uh things now. And uh, and 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 as men, we just we need to have be bold enough to just say, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna acquiesce. I'm gonna I'm gonna stay a man. Well, absolutely. And this is really ultimately the um the solution I have to get us out of the situation uh, in the you know the final conclusion of the book, but I have some. I try to put it into concrete, um, concrete things that can be changed. In other words, uh, again, I, I try to avoid lamenting and bemoaning. I try to avoid taking refuge in the problems of the culture. Well, let, let, uh, the cult- okay, let's talk about this in in a, in a minute. Okay, we got to take a break here, Doctor Stephen Baskerville, living in Romania. Professor in Warsaw, Poland. Wow. How cool is your life? His newest book is called Who Lost America? 
why the United States went communist and what to do about it. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. We invite our mama bears to join with us at deepadventure.com. You'll have access to all of the Long Ride Home TV shows even before they air on EWTN. Plus, three years of the shareable Ocean Sunrise daily catechism videos. Plus, at deepadventure.com, a 20% discount at our online store with all of our great t-shirts and clothes and books and rosaries and medals and all kinds of accessories. You'll also get an autographed copy of Bear's latest book, and for a limited time, a Catholic biker stuffed teddy bear. All at deepadventure.com. Come on, Mama Bears, let's hear you roar. Go to schoolofmanliness.com and subscribe to our weekly email to receive video YouTube links of the Bear Wozniak radio show, as well as the Spirit of Adventure with Bear and Cindy TV show, which, by the way, is filmed in the tropics, as well as our manly evangelistic YouTube shorts. Go to schoolofmanliness.com. Be the kind of man that when he gets out of bed in the morning, the devil says, oh no, he's up. Go to deepadventure.com and invite Bear to speak. Aloha. Welcome back to the Bear Watson Convention. I'm just going to keep bringing it up that today, that my newest book, 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? You know, my wife and I were driving along uh, the beach here in Waikiki, going up along Diamond Head, and this song came on. I think it, her name is Cole. Forget her first name. And she says, you're going to love this song. And she turned it up, and she was she was lamenting. She was singing, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? Where is my John Wayne? Where is my hero? Where Where is... Uh, where you, you make the money, I'll raise the kids. Where where have all the cowboys gone? We need women to we need women to be all you know, we need women to be we need you women to help us to raise sons and daughters, but for Pete's sake, keep us in the home with you. Don't kick us out, don't find uh an excuse to have a divorce. Make it find a way to to uh Give your spouse the man room to be a man. Back him up when he makes a stand in your house to discipline your children instead of question him and 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 undercut him. He has an instinct to protect his family in ways maybe you don't discern. We love our women to have all the all of their all of their wildest dreams come true as I pray for my wife every morning when we go out and have our prayer time. But uh we for women. We need for you to stop undercutting the men. Let the men do what they do best. Let you do what you do best. And then, of course, we can team up together to to change the world. We're talking with Dr. Stephen Baskerville. Oh, and I'm tr- so I'm trying to say, women, you should read this book too. Get it for your daughters. It'll help them understand what a man is, and help them to choose the right man, and help them appreciate their man. And 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 uh, you know, the thing is, is, the Bible says for men to love their wives like Christ loves the church. That's pretty gnarly. That means we have to lay down our lives for. Our wives, but you know what the word for for love is in the Bible? Because just a few, a little bit later, the Bible says, "Women respect your husbands." That's the way a man receives love is via like this man, Stephen Baskerville. He knows I love him because I'm giving him a lot of respect right now. I don't have to say I love you for him to know that I that I do, but because I'm giving the dignity and the respect that that I see in him. Women, if you love your husbands, respect them. Dr. Stephen Baskerville, I just keep getting on the scope. You got me stirred up with your new book, Who Lost America? Why the United States Went Communist and What to Do About It. What's the what do we what's the what to do about it of the emasculation emasculated America? Well, it's important to realize if we could just back up a little bit that the book does not start out and it's not marketed as a book about men or masculinity or femininity or relations between men and women. It's a book primarily about the political crisis of the last four years. In other words, the takeover, what I call the coup d'etat, essentially, of the United States by the radical left. And I'm thinking of the period roughly from the COVID lockdown in early 2020 to the present day. And I argue that the radical left has basically taken control of the United States government. Um, And this needs to be uh, explained. Nobody has explained why this has happened. Plenty of people Mm. lament that it happens. 
plenty of people complain. They give us all kinds of details about what what it involves. I mean, the you know the COVID lockdowns, the phony vaccines, the the uh, civil liberties violations, the lawfare operations, the open borders, the lawless cities, the war in Ukraine. You name it. All these horrible things. The coup why? right now of them and not them, them ignoring 14 million voters and putting Kamala Harris in as the exactly. As the, yeah, it's a coup. There's no doubt about it. And the best commentators, and I listen to some good commentators on these subjects, some really incisive people, but even the best commentators can't explain why this is happening or why so many disasters are being perpetrated by primarily the Biden administration with, with others, help from others, but uh, in so many different places, in so many different ways, all at the same time. In other words, why did the left take control? And uh, I, this is this is what my starting point. And my complaint is that um, my complaint is that uh, a number of things have to be. One is that not only did the left win, but essentially by the corollary to that is that the right lost. So we need to ask ourselves and, and the professional right wing um, political class, what what are we doing wrong? What did what did why did you allow this? Why did we allow this to happen? Uh, what you know what's going on here? And then if you even if you assume that it's all the fault of the professional right wing political class, the you know, the professional uh, right wing establishment, you, you, you can't blame it on them any more than you could blame it all on the lefties. So, you know, ultimately, it has to be uh, all of us. We blame we have to blame ourselves. We, we've all allowed this. The right wing allowed the left wing to take control. And we, the mass of citizenry, allowed the right wing to fall down on the job. Um, so. Where do we go from here? What is the? How do we explain this? And what do we do about it practically? Oh, how, when do we stop just lamenting and bemoaning and describing all the terrible things that are, the left is doing? And when? Do, how do we we come up with some practical solution? Well, the first stage, I believe, is to explain why it's happening, and we've talked about that a bit. A lot of it is the you know the emasculation of a. There's a number of things. I, I would argue things like the. Uh, the professionalization of politics, the stealing of politics away from the citizenry and putting it in the hands of professional paid political operators, not just in the parties, but uh, in many oh. institutions in America. Uh, and um, that that's a big part of it. Eclipsing the churches, uh, the churches were the main um, institutions for um, you know, for criticizing the political system, for standing it from the outside. It used to be, it used to be education was run by Christians. It was, it was a Catholic thing. The first 32 universities were Catholic. Absolutely. And this was yeah, a great became, institution. Public education became uh, a feminization. I'm sorry, I'm getting on my toolbox again, but it's a feminized environment. I, I, would, I, would, I wouldn't put my kid in one of those public schools today. I wouldn't send them to one of those universities. There's so many great ones that you can, but to send them someplace where all they're going to get is indoctrinated by left-wing ideology, why would you do that? Right. And there's a long history in the Western world of, of churchmen, brave churchmen, standing up and pointing the bony finger at the civil authorities and saying, you know, you're encroaching on God's turf. You're, um, you know, you're overstepping your bounds. And you're, I'm thinking men like Ambrose at Milan and, uh, you know, St. John Fisher and Thomas More and Thomas uh, More, yeah. Car Cardinal Minzenti in Hungary during communism and uh, some Protestants also, Richard Wurmbrandt in, here in Romania during communism and Martin Luther King. Uh, and these, you know, these churchmen have stood up and said, and, and uh, the Puritans did this in early America. That was the job of the Puritan ministers. Was to stand up and say to the civil authorities, you know, you're you're not doing your job properly. Well, this worked for a long, and and these were the kind. Wait of a minute, churchmen. isn't it government's job to be God? Well, this is the this is the message of the churchman. You're not God. You, you got to remember this. Whether you're well, wait Henry a minute, that, that, where 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 are the liberals going to worship then? Well, the, trees. True, true. But I, my my argument actually, at one point in the book, I suggest that the decline of religious faith, the decline of the churches, came partly from the liberals, but it also came from the conservatives. Because what the conservatives did was they replaced the churches with professional lobbying groups and law firms. Now, so the churches were amateur organizations. They were full of congregants. They were full of worshipers. And the minister's main job was not political, but he could get the congregation to become political if 
things were serious enough. If there was a crime, like slavery, uh, and he could get them, get them, and and they would all go into the you know the courts or whatever, and they would say to the magistrate together, you know, you're 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 overstepping your bounds. Well, this was and this was something you could do. You couldn't do it. professional law firms and professional lobbyists and pressure groups, interest groups don't do this. Um, they they do it, but they they pull their punches because they know which side their bread is buttered on. So these professional lobbying firms have eclipsed the churches. And I argue that this is very debilitating uh, for us. So it's not just the liberals. There's many, many ways in which we, the conservatives and the rest of us, liberal, conservative, amateurs, uh, have also contributed to this in ways that we sometimes don't think about. So I argue that we all need to look inside of ourselves and say, and this is an old Christian message, by the way, you know, what have I done to bring this sin upon the nation? Right? What is what have we all done to bring this judgment upon us? It's not just the wicked. When God judges the world, when God brings a judgment upon the nation for its iniquity, it's not just the it's not right. just the evil people that do it. He's doing it because of all of us, you know, because all right. of us have fallen down on the job. And that's where we have to start asking ourselves. So um so I argue that, you know, we, we we've all got to stand up and, and grasp the nettle and uh, see what we can do and not blame just the lefties, not just blame the neocons and, um, you know, not even blame the Republican Party, uh, but, you know, blame ourselves. Yeah, get to work. We've failed to do. You're yeah. right within your home. We're talking with Dr. Stephen Baskerville. Uh, you know, men, we need for you to, to run for city council. We need to you to be on the church council. We need for you to get involved with Knights of Columbus. We need for you to teach RCIA classes. We need for you to run for school board. We need for you to run for Congress. We need for men to roll up the sleeves. Now, uh, yes. the problem is that most uh, conservatives, the last thing they want to do is get involved with government. They just want government off their back. But if government's on your back, the best way to do that is to is 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 from within, right? You need to get back. You need to get back in in the arena. And be willing to fight for a uh, fight for your families. We'll be right back with Dr. Stephen Baskerville, his newest book, "Who uh, Lost uh, America: uh, Why United States Went Communist and What to Do About It." I, I, there's that old rap song, "Who Let the Dogs Out?" That's what we need. We need the dogs. We need the men to. We need to let them out of the house and and put this put this uh, this this earth back on its axis. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. People love our EWTN TV show, Long Ride Home with Bear Wozniak. Thanks to you, the show has won four different tally awards. And now, instead of waiting each week for the next episode to air, you can actually binge watch our show and even share it with your friends when you go to deepadventure.com and join the Mama Bears or the Man Cave. Along with all the other benefits, you get total access to all the seasons of our aired episodes, plus instant access to episodes that won't even air for several months. Long Ride Home with Bear Wastick, a great way to communicate the gospel in a gritty enough way that even tough men will stop and watch at deepadventure.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wastick adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link, or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. Announcing Spirit Adventure TV with Bear and Cindy. So many people, especially you mama bears, tell us we want more of Bear and Cindy together. Well, we're happy to announce our website, spiritofadventuretv.com, as well as our YouTube channel, Bear Wozniak Spirit of Adventure, where you can watch Spirit of Adventure TV with Bear and Cindy. Join us where we live in the Hawaiian Islands or where we sail our boat, the Spirit of Adventure, in the Caribbean. Experience both adventure and serenity with us as we share our life together, as well as the joy and the wisdom of our faith. Go to spiritofadventuretv.com to find out more and subscribe on YouTube to Bear Wozniak Spirit of Adventure. 
and join us, Spirit of Adventure with Bear and Cindy. My 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? at schoolofmanliness.com or wherever books are sold. Mama Bears, get these books into the hands of your men. Are you still listening? I thought we warned you to change to an easy listening station. Well, you asked for it. Here is more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Aloha. Welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Go to our website, schoolofmanliness.com. It used to be called bearschoolofmanliness.com, but for years, I was trying to just buy the website rights to schoolofmanliness.com, and we got it. So go to schoolofmanliness.com, become part of the man cave. We get together about once a month for Zoom video meetups. We have a like a non-Facebook community there. Most most men don't want to, don't like being on Facebook. But we got a community there of men who can tell their hold their bear moments, but also encourage each other and challenge us, challenge each other. And we've got a uh, about three years worth of curriculum. So we as a group of men go through once a month that month's curriculum, which has video and audio and all kinds of con con different contributors like Father Bryce Lundgren and and others and uh, self assessments and ways for you to get traction. And the good news is, is we can give you a uh, separate login for your son that you will that you will have access to he can't be part of the man cave but you can track your son's progress through the school of manliness you can lead it lead him through it you don't have to have your son come home and say hey what did you do at school today and he and, say, and him say nothing you can actually sit down and and, and get gritty uh, and talk and, and talk story about what a, what a real man is by going through the curriculum with him we're talking with with dr stephen baskerville uh, his newest book, "Who Lost America? Why the United States Went Communist and What to Do About It," and I think we should call that call your next book, "Who Let the Dogs Out." You know, Stephen, a lot of men now are attracted uh, uh, to some of these kind of over the top. Uh, I don't know what what to call them, uh, over the top males. You know, that you're seeing on the social media that some of them have gone Islam because of the the uh, the uh, the manly over the top mm. manliness, I guess, of Islam. That you point out, you point out in your I I stole it from you. It's not in your book, but uh, but the uh, the fact the fact is is we need we need uh, we need real men again. And uh, one thing I want to say is, but some of the things that I'm seeing so much on social media are by young black men. I'm so proud of them. I'm so proud of them because they're making statements about getting off the liberal plantation. I don't need your help. The Thomas Sowell types in the of the world. And the young men, you know, some of these over-the-top rap music that's so sh male chauvinistic, I, I don't know what the word is, where they degrade women, is an expression of the young, the young black men are so are so successful. They so contributed so much to the world in in, in their in their in their music, in their athleticism, and, and in so many other areas. We need our young black men to rise up and be and to be men. And don't let them kick you out of that house. Uh uh take care of those. Take care of that woman. Take care of those children. But I'm just so proud of them. And I'm seeing them kind of inspiring other younger men who who have also been baffled by what's been going on in the world. So many young men go are being raised by a woman that hates men. And they get it coming into manhood and it, it just confuses them. Uh, so I'm so proud of the young, young black community of men because I think they're helping lead uh the other the other minorities and the and 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 our our younger Caucasian men back to being manly. I see them sta standing up and I love, I love to see that. Um, but we're talking about how do we get, how do we, how do we win this battle? This con the satanic people talk about the deep state conspiracy. And I go, dude, I don't know, probably so, but I know there's a conspiracy. It's satanic and there's there. Satan hates you and has a terrible plan for your life. How do we, how do we defeat, how do we defeat the enemy? Well, um, yeah, like you say, I, um, I don't know if you, have gotten this far, but there isn't kind of an encomium to young black men in my book, because I think in many ways they are the key to this. Uh, they, um, they're in many ways up till now, they've been one of the most despised sectors of society. They're despised by the left, they're despised by the right, they're labeled as deadbeat dads and as criminals and as you know, abusers, wife beaters, and so forth. But you know, I think the young black male is one of the most extraordinary figures 
in American culture. Uh, and I say so. And I think they have the, the key yeah. to this because they are, um, you know, they are patronized as being kind of victims. And if they by the especially the Democratic Party, and if they stand up with as more and more of them are doing, stand up and say, I, you know, I want no part of the Democratic Party. Uh, a friend of mine is Mark Fisher, who was a leader of the uh, Black Lives Matter in, um, I think it's Maryland. And he stood up and announced his support for Donald Trump. And he was completely ostracized by the rest of the Black Lives Matter. And he started criticizing feminists and uh, who are the ones that really run Black Lives Matter, by the way. Right. And All the money uh, yeah. Too, yeah. Yeah, the, uh, I think I think in many ways the whole racial thing is a front for the for the radical feminists in many ways. Yes, but anyway, course. and he he uh, you know he he was very forthright in his criticisms of this, and and more and more of them are doing it. So yeah, I think it's a uh, a matter of waking up, and I think uh, you know I think men generally need to do this. Other men are waking up too. One of the most uh, extraordinary uh, phenomena I see in society today, and it's it's just gotten horrible press the media just hate it the media just detest it um especially the not not just the feminists but the right-wing media detest it also is this trend toward um what's called MGTOW, men going their own way it's uh the the the, the, the men basically boycotting marriage families sometimes women altogether uh refusing to have relationships with women and men and and families because they know what the courts can do to them and how they can be just everything can be taken away from them and they can be criminalized. <clears throat> well, I certainly don't uh, uh, approve of that as an indefinite lifestyle. I think God calls us, most of us, to be fathers, husbands and fathers and to reproduce and to reproduce within the bonds of, uh, of matrimony, because that's the only way that marriage and reproduction is civilized and, and uh, constructive. Uh, so I think it's very important. But these men who are uh, refusing to do this, this is a, well, it's a spontaneous action, for one thing. It's not something they've organized to do. They're just doing it. Um, and my criticism of it is they mustn't let it, they must, they must have a point. They mustn't just do it, you know, without any purpose, without any reason, without any point. It has to be like any strike. People call it, uh, Helen, Helen Smith mm, wrote a book about interesting, it interesting. called The Marriage Strike. And like any strike, a, mar a strike, marriage strike has to be devoted to a purpose. It mustn't just be an open-ended strike that goes on forever. It's got as to you, As you know well in Poland, right, from the, from the solidarity yeah, From movement. solidarity, The exactly. strike is meant to have a result. Exactly. It's meant to build leverage so that people have to listen to you when you lay down your demands. And this is why the, the MGTOW, the marriage strike, if it's just uh, apolitical and uh, and indefinite and self-pity and, and fear, then, yeah, I have no time for it either. But if it's organized as a means to an end and used as leverage to, uh, to, to, uh, to force the political class and the state to grant certain important concessions for men, like to stop taking away their children in the welfare system and the family courts, uh, and to stop these phony accusations of domestic violence and child abuse and so forth, uh, then it's it's a, it's a very, it's got real potential. And it's got potential to bypass the political class, the very political class that hates them and, and is, you know, is constantly excoriating them and saying how evil and puerile they are. So this has a the, the the potential of a genuine, spontaneous citizen action, and it remains to be seen how the men handle this. You know, if it's if it's uh, if it's done well as a means to an end, then it's got great potential. If it's just men, you know, running away, hang, hanging out in their mother's basement, playing video games, oh. then we don't want that. Oh, of course. oh man, Nobody I had a that. gag. I had a gag reflex, right? <laughs> almost threw up. I'll tell you what, uh, Dr. Stephen Baskerville, your new book, I uh, get the title, Who Lost America? Why the United States Went Communist and What to Do About It. <clears throat> the fact is there are many good women out there. There are good women out there. In fact, uh, I was talking with Matt Swaim. He has the Sunrise Morning Show, and he says, for every, there, for every 20 good women, it's hard for me to find one good man because he wants to... My, my wife likes to put couples together, but it's hard to find a good man. 
So having said all that, <clears throat> there's a scripture verse that I think is the scripture verse for young men today. It's Joseph said it. Uh, I'm sorry. Um, the angel said it to Joseph, who, as you know, is the terror of demons. Men need to start being dragon slayers again. But the words of the angel to him was this, do not be afraid to take Mary to you as your wife. Young men, you're, if, I understand if you want to really make a protest, make a protest by not doing a uh, sweep right, sweep left, by not going to bars to find a woman, but to actually find a good woman, go be involved in your church and find a good woman and marry her. Uh, the greatest weapon that we have, I, I someone asked Archbishop Shaput this, I was with him in the NAP Institute a few years ago, what is the best evangelistic program that you know of out there? And he said, well, get married, have lots of children, bring them up in the faith. Man, do not be afraid to take Mary to you as your wife. When I go and speak at Theology on Tap, or when I go speak at big events, Cindy and I, when she's with me, and there's women there, because usually I just talk to men, but when the women are there, they will get to our car before we can open up the trunk and get the books out. And their message to us is, please tell the men we need for them to be men. And the younger women are say, ask the men to take us out to invite us out for coffee, to take us on a date. And if they date us for a while, if they date us for a while, ask them to marry us. And if we say we'll marry you, then go ahead and marry us. And let's have babies. The good women are looking for you, good men. So be not afraid. Ask Mary. Do not be afraid to take Mary to you as your wife. Dr. Stephen Baskerville, we've run out of time. It's really an honor, really an honor. Uh, we need, men need to get this book, Who Lost America?, why the United States went communist and what to do about it. We need men and women to read this book. From Coming to us from Romania, professor in War Warsaw, Poland, what a man. Thank you for joining us, Dr. Stephen. It's a pleasure. Bachelor. Thank you. What an honor. Wow. This book's lit a fire, and I've only just read it. I only read one chapter this morning, so I just got the book. Till next week, ladies and gentlemen, if you made it this far, may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha. Thanks for listening to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Find more manly conversation at the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure YouTube channel. Subscribe and ring the bell.